I have really important news for you guys, and I've been sitting on this for four days. Can you're you pregnant. come out of your Can you come <laughs> out of your box to tell me first, or nope? Uh, I didn't. I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say this to anybody, <laughs> but something happened over the weekend. It's never happened to me before. And Your okay. sexual awakening? Yep, in a way. <laughs> and I'm okay. And I just want you guys to know that first. But I woke up on Sunday, and I did my normal routine. You know, like I you know, go take a morning pee. And I looked down right as I was about to wrap up, and I had a huge bruise on my penis. A gigantic bruise. Like, I'm not joking. It was, like, probably, like, a, a, the size of it's, a nickel. It's starting to fall off. Holy <laughs> shit, it's happening. <laughs> the... The prophecy of the gypsy oh. is true. <laughs> a... Are your palms hairy also? Like, what are the other symptoms? This explains why he can't see what's going on. He went blind. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone face blind. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I looked out and then I, I text Becky because she was out at brunch. It was Halloween. I was like, hey, like, I'm okay, but I have a, a bruise on my cock, and I have no idea where it came from. But, hey, honey, um, I... Uh, fine, it's whatever. I was like, are you in a place where I can send you a picture of this? Uh, <laughs> no, the most, not. the smoothest dick hey, pic uh, Hey, Becky, I, I know that I told you you could suck start a leaf blower, but I didn't want you to actually try. <laughs> um, so... She goes, actually, you know, yeah, I'm out, I'm stepping stepping out for something, so go ahead. And she goes, but also, are you asking if you can send a picture of your bruised dick on Halloween? Um, and, and yeah, but anyway, so the bruise is clearing up. I think it happened because Loki was laying on my lap and he got startled by something and he, like, launched off of me. Like, his paw, like... He curb stomped you. He curb stomped you. stop trying to fuck your dogs? I'm just going <laughs> to cut it right because of Loki. Just done. Cut. Boom. That's it. Well, that would require edit, so... Hey, hey, I do edits. Thank you. Well, uh, speaking of bruised dicks, Heil come slingers and welcome <laughs> to another fapping installment of the Disinformed Podcast. I am Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. And you all are graced today because we have in our very midst the artiste that has presented to you our podcast for the course of nearly... 17, 18, 17 episodes now that you are seeing the artist that designed our current art, which is brilliant, beautiful, and aesthetically engaging. We have the bad artist, Jesse. Hello. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Woo! Super excited to have you. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. And of course, the perks of being a super fan is that uh, you get to choose who presents a topic, which is going to make this a much easier evening for everybody, including the eye roll from our cucked little friend, Mr. Michael. Here. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think this to was going to be included. I thought it was pre-roll, but okay. no, no, no. We're going to tell you. Uh, it's the content they crave. Yes. <laughs> I just love listening to him get put down. I know Indeed. there's one other dude named Michael who actually agrees with you on that. <laughs> I wonder if we start marketing to like those sort of like uh, websites where it's like, oh, you want to see someone beat down? Just listen to this podcast. We got you. <laughs> you I remember? thought that's what we were doing for the Patreon is like different levels of Michael abuse. Yes. Courtney, oh, was it, was I'm it? sorry. I completely forgot about that. I thought we were doing the <laughs> countdown to your imminent demise, technically. Oh, uh, that countdown it? doesn't go fast enough. Marriage isn't that bad, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who bird. you're married to. Um, <laughs> Courtney, was, so, it, was it you back in the day who uh, said that we beat up on Michael too much before you were on the show, or was that somebody else? They're like, they're like, I like your show. Was, uh, was like, you're really Michael's just... friends. No, oh. that's some loser that doesn't think it's funny to beat up on Michael. Well, he doesn't listen to the show anymore because he's a fucking nerd. So, <laughs> <laughs> jeez, that was no. A lot. Remember, I used to send you fan theories about why Michael was responsible for 9/11 because of the way he pronounced things. <laughs> <laughs> You're not How wrong. come I haven't heard these fan theories? These are I'm fantastic. I'm saving it for my episode for my uh, one year. Uh, the only reason that we have the flames that we do is because you're carrying a bunch of jet fuel in your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, for uh, what we typically do on this show for the uninitiated amongst you is we usually delve into a random esoteric topic, and in the course of explaining it to one another, we will lie occasionally. And part of the joy and the shtick is that the co-hosts have to ferret out those lies from the facts that are being imparted at any given interval. And, uh, you know, occasionally we win. Occasionally we uh, lose. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's shit. But isn't the but, gift the friends we make along the way? 
Indeed. And don't you worry, we will not let you leave ill-informed because we have a little denouement at the end of the show where we explain what was actually lied about, so you're safe. With all of that said, this week, I am going to be bringing you, at Jess's behest, the Mothman. Yay! (laughs) This evening, I have six lies prepared for you. So, is everyone ready? Is six like the magic number? I feel like I've listened to a few in a row now where it's been six lies. Uh, I've I've thrown a lot of sevens recently. Great. (laughs) Some were even nine. Nine nine. No sixty nine though. Nice. uh, That would be like a lot of lies. It's like every word that comes out of your mouth pretty much is a lie in that episode. Then. That'd be my sister's episode, but uh, anywho, <laughs> moving on. Oh, before before you jump in, though, since you have said how many lies there are, are we going with the new rules that, that our super fan requested, that we stop with cheap number lies? Oh, uh, that, I mean, that totally I, fucks it up for what I want to do later, then. <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> well, when there are that many die involved, how can you not have a number lie? But uh, actually- I have had a moratorium on number lies for quite some time. Yeah. So I I typically tend not to include them. I will put a caveat in there that I'm not completely outside of the realms of doing one for the occasional lulling you all to sleep by expecting that I will never do one. But there is not a number line in this episode. <laughs> okay. Is that bullshit? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're getting so meta. Huh. All right, so, uh, and before we get going, apparently uh, the Mothman is very popular not only... For the content, but also based on the aesthetic, according to a pair of podcasters presently in the the room. Yeah. Yeah, So tell um, me. It was discovered shortly before we began that Courtney and I had both considered going as a sexy Mothman for Halloween this year, and we both did not. I ran out of time. I was ill prepared, like many things in my life. And so I just didn't even dress up. And Uh, I disagree. Your hat was brilliant. Okay. That's, that's part. Of, that's her normal. <laughs> I, I, I did wear a hat. Um, I wear that around the house. <laughs> there you go. She's a witchy well, woman. It's great. Yeah. Witchy woman. Sometimes you gotta seduce your husband. That's a thing. And uh, <laughs> Michael was also going to go as a sexy moth man, but his no no square was giving him problems trying to get into the uh, spandex. So it couldn't ju- make it. The rubbing. It was just. It was too much. I couldn't handle it. I mean, if you lived in your uh, your old house, all you'd have to do is go to your shower and just grab all that hair out of the. Uh, you know out of the drain and you could uh, make the wings uh, just right there i get it People i didn't don't forget clean the shower <laughs> jeez that's oh. like two that years ago that wasn't like an unclean shower that was like a possessed shower <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> yeah that wasn't an unclean shower that was nuremberg oh my god <laughs> There were no war crimes committed in that shower and speaking okay. of torture like, on to my episode yes 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 so <laughs> In the annals of West Virginia folklore, the Mothman is a pervading and oppressive presence representing the supernatural unknown. Described as a massive humanoid creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from November 6 uh, or November 15, 1966 to December 15, 1967, the creature was first discussed in a newspaper report published in the Point Pleasant Register dated November 16, 1966, titled Couples See Man-Sized Bird Creature Something. Thing? Question mark? <laughs> Not question mark. Oh. It was uh, it was a definite statement. But uh, the national press soon picked up and dispersed the reports, helping spread the story across the greater United States. The Mothman was then further introduced to a wider audience by Gray Barker in 1970, and then further popularized by John Keel in his 1975 book The Mothman Prophecies, claiming that there were supernatural events related to the sightings and a connection to the collapse of the Silver Bridge in Point Pleasant. Was it actually called Mothman Prophecies, or is that just the movie? Mm-hmm. Nope, that is that is actually the book title oh, as well okay. as the film. Cool. All right. Was there a person actually named Gray Barker? Barker? There was a person named Gray Barker. (laughs) I have nothing else in my research that speaks of Gray Barker because I cobbled together about like eight different reports in order to get this, and so I totally spaced that. That's why I said that with a bit of, hmm? 
because I don't okay. remember who the hell Gray Barker <laughs> is, but uh, apparently that's a thing from the 1970s. Right, Anywho, then. the book, as uh, John alluded to, was later adapted into a 2002 film starring Richard Gere. Oh. <laughs> Richard. The runaway bride himself. And... Uh, yeah! Sorry. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> it's been a long time since we got a good one. <laughs> Crack open the cold one with the boys. Got the John Weisers <laughs> the happening here. Uh-oh. So, an annual festival in Point Pleasant is devoted to the Mothman legend as well. Uh, just off of Main Street in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, there's a 12-foot-tall stainless steel statue that looks like a chrome mosquito. But, of course, with bat wings and human legs and an incredibly chiseled abdomen. Ooh. Is that bullshit? bullshit? Nope. Is it is it is chiseled? It's, it is chiseled, yes. Oh, it's very well defined. I mean, how are you gonna have a fat mothman? It's not gonna get off the ground. <laughs> they didn't ask me to model for it. It can it's fit in got, a bathtub. It's all wearing like a wife beater that's just like really dirty, just it's got a beer gut going around, just itching itself, holding like a can of natty like Looks like uh, uh, looks like Tony Soprano about. in a robe. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking like a bastardized version of uh Virgin? Yeah. Virgin? No. Uh, God damn it. A bastardized version of why am I blanking on uh, the monarch? That's all I envision is the <laughs> yes, fucking monarch. That's reasonable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's your character voice for the episode, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're welcome. So the uh spot that it stands in used to be called Gun Park, but the name was changed to Mothman Park in honor of the statue and the mythical creature it represents. The statue was apparently initially intended to be even more bizarre. The original plan developed by the town in 2001 after the release of the movie version of the John Keel book brought national attention to what was once strictly a local legend, but it called for the statue of the hometown monster hero to be a towering 20 feet tall. The Mothman's bulbous red eyes were also supposed to light up at night, but funding ran short, and the statue's football-sized eyes were left dull and glassy instead. Across the street, of course, is the Mothman Museum and Gift Shop, which sells copies of the Mothman Prophecies on DVD, as well as touristy schlock-like Mothman t-shirts and keychains. It stands as a testament to American capitalism, as well as the decided lack of culture in this country, that an individual can, of course, keep a brick-and-mortar store operating based solely on the notion that a 50-year-ago several residents in Point Pleasant thought they may have seen a flying man with giant wings and eyes that glowed red in the dark. Americans, of course, do love a good story. But uh, there is the most unwieldy aspects of one of the worst written articles that I discovered on this topic. And so now we will move into the actuality of events here, at least as they were reported. It aids the Mothman's case that it was seen initially by a group rather than your standard lone eccentric. As legend has it, the flying Mothman of Point Pleasant scared countless locals in the 60s, and its infamy grew to mammoth proportions following being attributed as the cause of the deaths of over 40 people in the Silver Bridge collapse. However, to appropriately understand the fervor of those who believe in the precognitive insectal oddity, we should contextualize the mythology a bit. So, in November of 1966, gravediggers working in a cemetery in Clenenden, West Virginia, spotted a strange, man-like figure in the trees above their heads. They glanced up from their work as something huge soared over the top of them. It was a massive figure which began moving rapidly from tree to tree. The gravediggers would later describe this figure as a brown human being. Quote, unquote. It has a name. I was, yeah, apparently they haven't seen many of those in West Virginia, and it is one of the whitest states in the Union, so I'm not shocked that they would be disturbed, but I digress. <laughs> the men were, of course, concluding their work day, and as such, it was at the tail end of dusk. Subsequently, their view was admittedly limited. However, one stirring detail remains consistent in each man's account. They described the shape as possessing the reflective eyes of a predator. The workers, frozen in fear, simply stared stock still until those radiant eyes eventually closed, allowing the entity to effectively vanish into the descending dark. Three of the men claimed to be paralyzed while encountering the creature. One, Arthur Sellers, only finding the ability to move or speak once he was no longer held in the shape's transfixing gaze. 
The crew subsequently scoured the area, hoping to find some rational explanation for the encounter, but found no further trace of the entity. It had simply vanished. Four days later, on November 15th, a second sighting was reported in the Point Pleasant Register. Two young couples, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Steve and Peggy Rogers, were driving together in Roger Scarberry's car from the TNT area, a decommissioned explosives factory from World War II, when they spotted a six- or seven-foot-tall, vibrantly white creature with red eyes and ten-foot wings standing near the road. Michael, you have the same look is, in your is, eyes. Is there um is is that story bullshit? Because uh, you said Steve Rogers and Peggy Rogers. Yeah, that's that's isn't that Captain America? That's Captain America, and then <laughs> I was uh, say, technically, those names I guess sound Captain super Britain. Fake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Steve and Peggy Rogers is bullshit. Okay. It <laughs> was. Steve. I'm like, I know something. I <laughs> caught the reference. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm like, wait. No. It's uh, <laughs> it is Steve and Mary Mallet. Ah. I mean, uh-huh. I think their name should have been Rogers because Mallet's a little boring. Yeah, I agree. That's why I changed it. I like it. Mallet. They probably tried to yield a hammer at it. Just like a Mallet. Yield a no hammer comedy. at it? Mallard? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Cloth mallard? covered Mallard? Swing in a no. Bring it back? Ah. Nope. Still not funny. Uh, uh. All right. So, the Mallards... And the Scarberries were, of course, driving through the TNT area, a decommissioned explosives factory from World War II, when they spotted the creature. Uh, It followed them as they drove out, but it seemed afraid of the car's headlights, at least according to their story. They later told the register that the thing, whatever it was, appeared to fly at speeds of roughly 100 miles per hour. They knew this only because it was allegedly chasing their vehicle to the outskirts of town in the air, and then scuttled into a nearby field and disappeared. Like, like the, you do. Like the monster in Jeepers Creepers? Pretty yeah, much. that's what I was, that was my first thought, and then, why would it be afraid of the headlights? It's part moth. Right? Moths would are be like beelining to straight to, to it? So, like, and... so is that bullshit? Yeah. No, that is not bullshit. That is just you're talking about a concocted story or a hallucination <laughs> or people who <laughs> genuinely encountered some cryptozoological marvel. And you just never can be. I, I do explain where the origin of the Mothman name comes from later on. So sit tight. Oh, okay. Okay. But no, it is not technically associated with a moth. As far as their story goes, remember, this is just a a flying human being or a brown person. True. (laughs) Why'd you whisper it? Like, it's a secret. We shouldn't say it. It is a secret. Keep it secret. Keep it safe. That's what they say. I'll even censor it that time. Just, uh... (laughs) No, I won't. No! No, I won't. Oh, God. Okay, so Roger narrowed down potential suspects for the creature thusly. It was a bird or something. It definitely wasn't a flying saucer. Whew. The devil, as they say, is in the details. So, knowing how absurd this must have sounded to a local paper in a small Appalachian community in the 1960s, Scarberry further insisted that the apparition couldn't simply have been a figment of his imagination. He assured the paper, If I had seen it while by myself, I wouldn't have said anything. But they was four of us who saw it. During the next few days, several other locals reported similar sightings. Two volunteer firemen who saw it said it was a large bird with red eyes. Contractor Newell Partridge, a resident of Salem, West Virginia, claimed that he saw strange patterns appearing on his television screen one night, followed by a mysterious sound just outside of his home. Shining a flashlight toward the direction of the noise, Partridge supposedly witnessed two red eyes resembling bicycle reflectors looking back at him. This anecdote remains a popular one in the Mothman mythos, especially since it allegedly led to the disappearance of Partridge's dog. Uh. Not Spot! Oh no! (laughs) Shazam! Is Is the TV stuff bullshit? Nope. Okay. Is Salem, West Virginia bullshit? No. Or Salem? Okay. It is not. Huh. So to this day, some still believe that the fearsome beast took his beloved pet. Uh, many locals believed the Mothman lived in a vacant nuclear power plant on the outskirts of town, in an area once home to a top-secret government facility where nuclear weapons had been tested. 
Was the Mothman some product of government tampering? A winged manifestation born from weapons testing? Godzilla? <laughs> Imaginations ran wild and subsequently created a legend. Due to the popularity of the Batman television series at the time as well, <laughs> the fictional superhero Batman and his rogues gallery were prominently featured in the public eye. While the villain Killer Moth did not appear on the show itself, the comic book influenced both he and Batman held is believed by some to have impacted the coinage of the name Mothman. Because the outfit is very reminiscent of how the creature is depicted as okay. looking. And so that may have impacted the local newspapers to dub it thus. No. So, yes, that is true. No, Batman's not real. I didn't say Batman was real. Batman's not real? <laughs> no. What? Wow. I think you broke John's heart. I'm Batman. <laughs> oh, hi. Batman's real. Batman. I saw him with Phoenix Jones that one time. <laughs> They're good guys. What about Peter North? I saw Peter North that one time, too. You know what's funny? I told you a story about me seeing Peter North here in Phoenix, right? No. Are we going to do a tangent? I mean, I can if you want. But, yeah, please. Give but I me. think Courtney doesn't know who Peter North is. I don't know who he is either. Yeah, just... Oh, so he's, so he's the, the a, degenerates uh, in the room know, but nobody else does. He is, he is an adult film star who is very famed <laughs> for the sheer volume of fluids that he is able to foist upon other individuals. Let me, let so, me just... That gave me the heebie-jeebies. Just think about, uh, think about how much jism is too much jism, and then triple it. And, and double yeah. it. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> you have ever watched a uh, a small, you know, anything be sprayed by a fire hose? That's essentially what his adult films look like. I, he I'm more like thinking of some Japanese animes where, like, if someone gets like a slight cut, it's just like a massive amount of blood that comes out. So I'm picturing that now. I'm Here's really sick a... of hearing about your fetishes, Michael. Here's one for the nerds, and then the tangent. Sorry. So his his load is equivalent to how big the orgasms are in Food Wars. Oh no! <laughs> that suddenly clears up everything. I ha I know down to the Stay milliliter tuned for my food how wars much. Episode, everybody. Uh, uh, eagerly waiting. That, what the fuck kind of context was that? I'm really not looking forward to telling my story now after all this. But and then anyway, <laughs> I was uh, I was at a at a Circle K, filling up my automobile, and in the stall next to me is a gentleman who bears a very striking resemblance to adult film star Peter North. And I'm by myself, so I can't confer with anybody else, and I'm, I'm looking across and going, like, I think that's Peter North. And I don't know why. I'm not going to ask him. <laughs> I'm certainly not looking forward to having that conversation, but I'm looking and I'm like, it's, it has to be. No one looks like that. Like, he's a very unique-looking human being. And then... Almost as if, you know, to manifest manna from heaven, Peter North took the pump out of his gas tank, pulled it out, and then sprayed gasoline all over the trunk of his car. It was definitely Peter North. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> The context is important. <laughs> yes, naturally. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Michael still doesn't get it. So Where it's okay, am Michael. I? Don't I don't even know it. what I what's happening anymore. I'm not shocked. All right. So whatever the local residents of Point Pleasant <laughs> were encountering, it didn't happen for long. A number of sightings echoing the first were reported over the next several months, but they came to a sudden and dramatic stop on December 15, 1967, with the collapse of the Silver Bridge. Just over a year after the first Mothman sighting, traffic was severely congested on the bridge. Originally built in 1928 to, to connect Point Pleasant to Gallipolis, Ohio, the bridge was packed with cars. This placed a severe strain on the structure, which was constructed at a time when cars were significantly lighter. The Model T, for example, weighed just 1,500 pounds, which is modest when compared to the 4,000-pound average for a car in 1967. Subsequently, the bridge's engineers had not been particularly imaginative, nor had they been especially cautious while creating the structure. The bridge's design featured very little redundancy, meaning that if one part failed, there was almost nothing in place to prevent all of the other parts from concurrently failing. And on that cold December day, that was precisely what happened. 
Without warning, a single eye bar near the top of the bridge of the Ohio- on the Ohio side cracked. The chain snapped, and the bridge, its careful equilibrium disturbed, fell to pieces, plunging cars and pedestrians into the icy water of the Ohio River below. Forty-six people died, either by drowning or being crushed by the wreckage. Following the Mothman sightings, the bridge collapse was the second terrible and bizarre thing to put Point Pleasant on the map in a year's time, so it didn't take long for folks to connect the two. In John Keel's book, for example, the author conflates the sightings and bridge disaster were connected and that the Mothman activities were actually bad omens, warning of the bridge's impending collapse. He also incorporated UFO activity to ice his conspiracy theorist cake, His story thus lent further meaning to the legend, and the town soon became iconic among conspiracy theorists, ufologists, and fans of the paranormal, interlocking the Mothman sightings and the bridge's tragic collapse in the public consciousness. No, he he did... Yes, he connected it to UFOs. What? Okay. This was uh, further solidified (laughs) when the film of the same name starring Richard Gere was released in 2002. Now, as we have noted on this show many times previously, the human mind does tend to grasp for causal relationships to help justify the inexplicable. Uh, Thus, the fact that the bridge collapse was later attributed to a faulty suspension chain did not slow the conspiracy theories one iota, as the town folk were more desperate to explain the appearance of a hulking supernatural oddity lurking in their midst and terrorizing their minds. There is an innate comfort to the concept that the creature had a more benevolent intention with its uh, presence in Point Pleasant, rather than the malevolent animus his monstrous form would suggest. The rationale makes the locals as fond of the legend as they were initially frightened of it, and if the statue in their square is any indication, they're very fond of it. (laughs) So... In point of fact, in June of 2020, a petition was started to replace all Confederate statues in the United States with statues of the Mothman. That's bullshit. Bullshit. That is not bullshit. Whoa. In the entire U.S.? Yes, in the entire U.S. As of June 2021, the petition has garnered nearly 19,000 signatures. I mean, right. I, I would rather see statues of Mothman, so I'm not entirely If you entirely had to choose between one or the other. <laughs> like, the I'm South wouldn't opposed. have lost that war if Robert E. Lee was replaced by Mothman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a whole him at the helm? unit of Mothman, uh, that, could, that could route any sort of army. I mean, they'd know the attack was coming at the very least. Michael, is there, a, is there a mod on the game that you've been playing for 20 years uh, that lets you just command an army of Mothmen? If not, if I was any way decent in, like, computer modding, I could add it. You won't. You don't have the balls. So that's a no, I don't. (laughs) You know what? I'm going to check it. Continue. I will look this up. (laughs) Please. I need Uh, a Mothman uh, Skyrim mod. Mm. Oh, there's got it. I would be surprised if there wasn't a Mothman Skyrim mod. For fuck's sake. If there's a mod that does the Thomas the Train as the dragons, and there has to be one that turns the dragons into Mothman. There is at least, uh, and it's actually in um, Fallout seventy six. Uh, you can fight Mothman. Yes, you it can. is because it's, it's based out of yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, at least that. If probably when that game came out, a million mods for Fallout were made with Mothman. So I would gather. That. I think he's also in Minecraft as well. I believe it too. I mean, pretty much like he he has such a he's known it's a it's a urban myth that a lot of people know of. So if there's a game that has a large modding community, I would be surprised if there wasn't at least Mothman added to those games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from the collapse of the bridge on, of course, the stories naturally only get stranger. The idea that visitations from the Mothman predicted disaster led some believers to make ties to the Chernobyl disaster of 1986, the Mexican swine flu outbreak of 2009, and, of course, the 2011 nuclear disaster in uh, Fukushima, Japan. According to Georgian newspaper Slobodnya Gryznya, Russian ufologists also claim Mothman sightings in Moscow foreshadowed the 1999 Russian apartment bombings as well. 
In 2006, a handful of people in La Crosse, Wisconsin, reported sighting a similar creature, which they dubbed the Man Bat. <laughs> no. I was hoping it would be the Man Moth. Just, nope. just switch it up. Got to be, got to be new, original. They, they had to stick with Batman villains, so we've moved to to Man Bat. <laughs> the creature, man. <laughs> the creature, long with a large wingspan and yellow eyes, not red, reportedly flew over the car of a man and his son, both of whom became sick to their stomachs afterwards. Was it because he had a huge wiener? <laughs> they were Peter, really <laughs> Peter <jealous> North <laughs> just <laughs> dropped a giant load. <laughs> yeah. Does he ever pop it out of the fucking walls? I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Ask your mom. <laughs> I was like this close to taking a drink when breathe, you said man, that. Breathe, man, breathe. I not have any I liquid can't. in my mouth. Thank God. <sighs> <sighs> my mom's a saint, by the way. So, that's like, <laughs> Of course she is. Well, she certainly we prays a lot. She's on her knees her well. a lot, that's for sure. Yeah. That's what I'm driving at, <laughs> That's yes. where we were, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Point Pleasant's fame as the home of the Mothman legend also hasn't waned in the recent decades either. In 2016, a man who just moved to Point Pleasant, it's very mysterious, he spotted a creature jumping from tree to tree as well. He claimed to local reporters that he was unaware of the local legend of Mothman, Simply oblivious, uh, until he allegedly spotted the beast himself. Wow. Okay, bro. Very lucky. What? No. <laughs> Later that year, a WCHS-TV published a, po a photo which purported to be of the Mothman, taken by an anonymous individual while driving on Route 2 in Mason County. Uh, a science writer named Sharon A. Hill proposed that the photo showed a bird, perhaps an owl, Carrying a frog or a snake away. <laughs> Sharon A. Hill? Apparently Sharon A. Hill was trying to account for the mammoth member on the Mothman by the frog or snake <laughs> is what I'm assuming. I don't know. Is that is is that name bullshit? The name is not bullshit, no. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, thus wrote that there is zero reason to suspect it is the Mothman as described in legend. There are far too many more reasonable explanations. <laughs> Like Tarzan or something, just hopping from tree to tree. It's certainly possible. <laughs> uh, unsurprisingly, a number of others living in the Point Pleasant at the time of the original sightings did not accept the Mothman theory on its silvery, red-eyed face either. The county sheriff is said to have dismissed the creature as a type of heron he called a shitpoke. <laughs> what? A what? A, I love the names yep. of birds. A shitpoke. <laughs> Shit. Yes. Uh, he didn't contextualize that either. It's just, you know, it's that bird, a shit poke. Is that when you try <laughs> anal without warning? Apparently. <laughs> Whoa, don't shit poke me, bro. I'm sorry. <sighs> Always floats back to Peter North again. I don't know why. <laughs> The unofficial sponsor of this episode. Yes, we're sending a lot of traffic to his site. <laughs> and I don't mean his genitals. Um, oh. uh, subsequently, an article printed in the Gettysburg Times. Uh, oh, my God. What happened? Some, some of this stuff is just I, I didn't uh, proofread this as thoroughly as I should have because I did this today. So uh, indicates Dr. Robert L. Smith, then associate professor of wildlife biology at West Virginia University, uh, indicating the creature was most likely a sandhill crane which is a bird not typically found in the area, but whose size, which is roughly around six feet, and wingspan, which is usually over seven feet, and the circles of reddish flesh around its eyes approximate most of the physical descriptions of the would-be Mothman. The bird, he posited, may have wandered out of its usual migration route and therefore was unrecognizable at first because it's not native to the region. And, of course, a six-foot-tall bird with a seven-foot wingspan is going to be pretty intimidating near dusk when you're digging a fucking grave. Yeah. So, it's reasonable to expect. Anywho, others have uh, further hypothesized that the crane was deformed, 
especially if it resided in the TNT area, as they indicated previously. Uh, and so it's been suggested that the bunkers, the World War II bunkers where the nuclear testing happened, uh, may have leaked toxic materials into the neighboring wildlife preserve, possibly affecting nearby animals. I did say preserve there, so you're, you're welcome. <laughs> Got a, I caught a case of the Michaels. Oh, no. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's spreading. You also said a cemetery earlier instead of cemetery. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I guess if we want to. It could have been a cemetery, yes. Yeah, so. yeah. It like was you. a sedentary cemetery. We like so, to have it. Am I just going to end up drawing all of you fucking in the English language? Or? It's possible. <laughs> this is what I happens think... when I eat before I get on, is that uh, I've got stuff just <laughs> oh, burbling yeah. up here. Yeah, baby doll. Uh, I think if you drew Shane fucking the English language, it would be more like a seduction thing. Like it would be like him taking the English language on a date, whereas Michael's would be like ouchy magouchy little bro in the back of a Volkswagen. Uh -huh. So uh, <laughs> one, one would be a, a drugged version of the English language for Michael, and then I would be gently uh, and lovingly Ooh, caressing Shane the various folds and, and flops. And <laughs> Shane would be doing uh, Lady and the Tramp with the English language. He'd be doing the spaghetti scene. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. Um, <laughs> Completely throwing everything off, I did find a mod in the game that I play that adds a, the a religion, Cult of the Mothman. It also adds Jediism and then the Cult of Mars and Brotherhood of Steel to go back to Fallout as a reference. I like that. So, That's where you went, and John's over here, again, repeatedly fetishizing dogs on the same episode. Because first, <laughs> yeah. Loki bruised his dick, and now he wants to, to reenact the Lady in the Tramp scene with the spaghettis. The mind wants what the mind wants, so... Stand by my statement. Indeed. Yeah. So, since we're talking about deformed cranes, we'll get back into John's sex life later. Uh, it has been suggested that these bunkers leaked the toxic materials that uh, caused this thing to mutate and uh, then become even larger than it typically is. A folklorist Jean Harold Brunvand expands on these views, indicating that Mothman has been widely covered in the popular press, and some claiming sightings connected with the UFO phenomenon, and others again claiming the military storage site was Mothman's home. So the idea is that this is an alien entity that descended to Earth, and that's really, I don't know of anything else that really substantiates a claim as to why UFO involvement is here. Other than saying, like, well, he looks weird, must be an alien. <laughs> I don't know why Gormer Pyle's my go-to for this evening's voice, but <laughs> it's, mean, it's like pretty it. apt. So, uh, Brundvid notes that recountings of the 66-67 Mothman reports usually state that at least 100 people saw Mothman, in general, with many more afraid to report their sightings. <sighs> but of course observed that written sources for such stories consisted of children's books or sensationalized or undocumented accounts that fail to quote identifiable persons. So essentially this is all just circumstantial. Um, Brun he quoted children's books? Yes. I was going to say, is the children's books about Mothman bullshit? I no. <laughs> so specifically, a lot of these things are uh, supposed to be folkloric in their aspect, and I'll get into kind of what he's huh. saying, is that it derives from either folk tales or individuals suffering something that Michael apparently is stricken with. Uh, huh? <laughs> indeed. So uh, he found elements in uh, that are common uh, among many Mothman reports and much older folk tales, suggesting that something real may have triggered the terror which became woven in within existing folklore. Um, and so... You'll have a lot of the, you know, children's fairy tales, which are eerily reminiscent of some of the things that you find in these tales. He also records anecdotal tales of Mothman supposedly attacking the roofs of parked cars occupied by teenagers. So you see a lot of urban legends kind of rearing their ugly heads in the way that these things are conveyed. Wait, just teenagers just minding their own business, or do they I have like a makeup? I think you can extrapolate what they're referring to, Michael. Teenagers parked that... in random dark parking lots, doing things they shouldn't. What do you think they're doing, Michael? I, I, I don't know. Mathematics. Talking about school. I was gonna joke and say that <laughs> talking about school and mathematics. Smoking, oh, what'd you get on the smoking on weed the for the first time with their friends in a parking structure and being <laughs> apprehended by the university police. If I had a oh, guess. That reminds me of a story. Shut Did the I ever fuck tell you? up. <laughs> is, is that 
Sorry, is that bullshit? No, it is the, not the bullshit. attacking the teenagers. No, okay. well, I thought this, Beverly again. was just in the car doing long division. <laughs> I mean, that's what I do, Officer. I was just biology. giving her an oral exam. Courtney's right. Uh, all right. So conversely, Joe Nickel, and who the fuck knows who Joe Nickel is, uh, says that a number of hoaxes followed the publicity generated by the original reports, such as a group of uh, construction workers who tied flashlights to helium balloons. <laughs> Which is just that sounds like the delightful. best way to spend the time. Uh, just you know, <laughs> a, a gaggle of helium balloons just floating with a pair of flashlights. <laughs> Honestly, that does sound kind of fun. It's a great shooting gallery, <laughs> at the very least. Uh, Hold on, uh, I have Nicole... to go off on a tangent really quick. So I used to work in a call center, and we had helium stations throughout the call center to decorate Wait. people's desks. And oh. <laughs> they actually had to like put in in the HR rules that if you were found sucking the helium out of balloons or out of the station, you would get fired. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm I mean, that kidding. sounds like the are best you, way. Like, are you comfortable? Someone's calling your call a call center and they answer and they're just like, oh, hey. Oh, I'm sorry. Our whole talk. You know, that <laughs> wow. sort of thing. That that would be hilarious. Um, do you feel you comfortable disclosing what company? Doesn't need to. No, <laughs> I don't see how it's relevant. Right. But uh, yeah, we could say it off air because I, but yeah, I'll, I think I'll tell I you guys relevant. later. But yeah, Fun not germane to the, the conversation. <laughs> I just think it's funny with that context as well. <laughs> I also enjoy the thought of Jess walking up and down the halls, going, "We represent the Lollipop Guild." The Lollipop Guild. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. <laughs> so, Nickel then attributes the Mothman stories to sightings of barn owls, suggesting that the Mothman's glowing eyes were actually the red eye effect caused from the reflection of light from flashlights or other bright light sources. Uh, again, other non-noted individual, Benjamin Radford, points out that the only report of glowing red eyes was secondhand, and that of Shirley Partridge, quoting her father Newell, who, for those of you who are playing the home game, is the guy who claimed that they absconded with his dog. <sighs> so... Some pseudoscience adherents, such as ufologists, paranormal authors, and cryptozoologists, claim that Mothman was an alien, a supernatural manifestation, or a previously unknown species of animal. As all of these things are wildly conflated with no real supporting evidence, but why not? They're fun stories. Never get the truth get in, or never let the truth get in the way of a good story, as they say. In uh, Keel's 1975 book, uh, he did claim that the Point Pleasant residents experienced precognitions, including premonitions of the collapse of the Silver Bridge, as we've intimated, and of course UFO sightings, visits from inhuman or threatening men in black, and other phenomena. So this is how he ties the UFOs into the story. It is also worth noting that the Mothman legend bears a resemblance to several demon and alien abduction archetypes found among those who have experienced sleep paralysis. It always comes back to damn sleep paralysis. Mm -hmm. Which I'm is sorry, terrifying, Michael. by the way, if you haven't experienced it. Oh, I... yes, I think uh, most of us here have. Yes, I, hate I think I bring it up every time that I do. Yeah, not a, fun, uh, not a fun time. Do you still have sleep no. paralysis on a good good? On occasion, yes. Um, the most frightening part about it for me is like you're in that REM, so you're not breathing super normal. It's very shallow breathing, and it freaks me out. That's the part that freaks me out hmm. the most. I'm like, I'm going to die. I can't breathe. And... Like You have the impulse to go, <gasps> but you fucking can't. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. you can't. You're still paralyzed. That's, that's interesting. I've never had that really happen to me. I usually, the sense of doom. That all-encompassing is usually what gets me. Yeah, Michael's uh, very traumatized by sleep paralysis. That's how he lost his virginity. He will never. <laughs> Damn probes. He will never ever forgive that clown. Uh, it wasn't even Pennywise, so it's not like I can talk about. Yeah, it, it was anymore. Pound Foolish. It was a, a far different uh, of the clown cadre. <laughs> It's a bad time for everybody. It's the knockoff of Pennywise. Yeah, nickel dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so in any event the sleep paralysis of course may suggest that the visions are nothing more than the embodiment of typical human fears pulled from the depths of the unconscious and grafted onto real life animal sightings when people panic so point pleasant subsequently held its first annual mothman festival in 2002 in conjunction with the release of the film 
because why not capitalize on a little national attention? Why? How don't we? Of course. So the Mothman Festival v- began after brainstorming creative ways for people to visit Point Pleasant. Go fucking figure. Uh, the group organizing the event chose the Mothman to be the center of the festival due to its uniqueness and as a way to celebrate the local legacy of the town. Because we don't want to be like, our bridges don't stand up right. <laughs> 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 I really want to say that's bullshit, but because I know small town America and the town that Halloween Town was filmed in still leaves that shit up all year long, not just at Halloween. Like, it's there all the time. I I believe this Mothman Festival is real. <laughs> oh, it, it most certainly is. And furthermore, according to the event organizer Jeff Walmsley, uh, the average attendance for the Mothman is an estimated ten to 12,000 people annually. Wow. Oh, of course. Yeah. Our friendly neighborhood, twelve foot tall metallic, uh, metallic, the twelve foot tall metallic statue of the creature, created by artist and sculptor Bob Roach, also not a fake name, was unveiled in two thousand and three. Uh, the Mothman Museum and Research Center also opened in two thousand and five. The festival is held on the third weekend of every September, hosting guest speakers, vendor exhibits, pancake eating contests, and hayride tours of locally notable areas. So I know you said that you usually don't do number lies, but Mm -hmm. I distinctly remember you saying at one point that it was a 20 foot tall statue and now it is 12. It was originally designed to be 20 okay. feet tall. They couldn't afford to make it 20 feet tall, so it is a 12 foot tall statue. We gotcha. all agree. They that also the wanted foot... it to glow bright red its eyes, yep. but then they couldn't okay. afford to do that, yeah. so they kind of just left. I, I thought they, they just yeah. couldn't afford to make the eyes glow. I missed that yeah. part. No, no, no. It's uh, <laughs> So it did say it is 12 feet tall. They wanted it to be 20 initially, and then they couldn't, couldn't do it. Okay. I think so. we all agree that the 20 20- foot statue was a good idea but maybe for this time we just go with the 12 foot statue and the next time we build a statue we go full regalia full 20 feet and red eyes the eyes ain't glowing i can't see shit out of this thing (laughs) thank you shane (laughs) you're welcome (laughs) so whatever the case The Mothman tale, of course, lingers like a bad fart uh, as one of the more intriguing examples of modern American folklore, as well as the cryptozoological marvel that we will continue to ponder for generations to come. And that, friends and neighbors, is what I have for you this evening on the subject of the dreaded Mothman. That was fun, man. Les. (laughs) Well, thanks. This was uh, something that I actually abandoned a while back and decided I wasn't going to do it. And then I was like, I have all of this material that is just sitting here. I might as well throw it together. Why the fuck not? And I'm not? so glad you did. Yeah. Well, I, thank I learned you. more things about Mothman, although we only got one lie, so... There's yeah. also, as I said, there's a, a slew of material that I could have sat and whipped in here, but it's all so disjointed and terribly concocted because it's not like there are credible sources citing actual rational responses to things. They're just going, it was UFOs. I tell you why my uncle saw it. It was green. But like, oh, what the? He oh. couldn't walk straight for a week. He's he's <laughs> blind. He's blind as a bat. He kept running into lights afterwards. That's how I knows it was Mothman. <laughs> Yeah, it's just not very well reasoned, and Fuck it's me. difficult to wade through, so I kind of just quit in the middle of everything and abandoned ship. So that's why we get just kind of the main discussion points. But uh, while we're here, anybody else have any guesses? Oh, man, I, I don't. Courtney's nodding her head very vigorously. So the version of Mothman I've heard always starts with the story of the four people in the car. Is the Gravedigger story made up? The Gravedigger story is not made up. That is actually technically the first sighting was the Gravediggers. But of course, it was like two days later that they actually encountered with the car. So it all happened uh, very close together. Okay. I have a thought. Is the pancake eating contest bullshit? The pancake eating contest is not bullshit, which God, again was one of those it. things where I'm like, as I'm as I'm writing this out, I was going, I have to keep this in because this sounds so ludicrous. It's like, why? They also have a Mothman themed pizza in the pizza parlor in town, and so it's like red and green peppers for the eyes and the coloration, <laughs> and it's cut into a Mothman oh, shape. Oh my. Yeah. Oh, that sounds terrible. Um, uh-huh. Bad bad plug time, but were you inspired to do this episode because of uh, 
uh, the Last Pod coffee sponsorship that's happening right now? Um, I haven't listened to a Last Pod episode in probably like three months. So uh, Spring Hill ja- <laughs> Oof. Spring Hill Jack Coffee is someone they've partnered with, and mm. I think they call it the Red Eye Blend. It's okay. supposed to be Mothman uh, centered. Like the, that the is art, delightful. The art is Mothman, and apparently it's very good. So. Oh well, I will have to investigate because yeah, I am nothing go. if not a fiend for coffee. Indeed. So we're totally going to this festival next year, right? <laughs> In a perfect world, if we could go somewhere together as a group, I would do that. Yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that'd be a blast. And we're gonna make sure Michael crosses the bridge before we leave. Michael, I have a problem with you using the word blast because I know <laughs> what it usually refers to. <laughs> Jimmy Neutron? No. Nah, Got a blast. Let, let's Jimmy Neutron more Peter North, if you, if you catch my meaning. <laughs> if it helps, I didn't get the reference until you had to explain who Peter North was. So. I, you still didn't get the reference. so Or the um, point. <laughs> blast off like a rocket? There we go. He's okay. coming around. I have one more guess. <laughs> God damn it. Give it. <laughs> Is Michael the Mothman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have found me out. I mean, he's he's no more Quite. or less intelligible than any of the reported tales, and well, he does tend to terrorize teenagers in cars. Just like in the thing, how they have to test the blood, there's only one way to know if he's actually the Mothman. Michael, show us your penis. <laughs> I quit. I'm turning. In I'm all, ending this meeting right what? now. <laughs> well, in all seriousness, though, um, when you were talking about how they thought it was from a government facility that had some very Stranger Things vibes... Mm-hmm. Um, is that part true or did you add that in? No, that part is true. They okay. they do believe that it is because it was cited multiple times over by that government testing facility. Gotcha. And, and, and again, there are many, many more. I, as they said, like over 100 people reported seeing this thing over the course of that yeah. one year period. So uh, and a lot of this, I'm sure, is also public fervor of just people being whipped into a frenzy by other folks. Gone, did you see that thing? So. Well, at this point, yeah, I feel like the lies are going to either be incredible payoff or just edging. One, <laughs> uh, I, I have one last guess. Okay, one, one guess. Um, a last you guess. said that there was uh, like an abandoned like nuclear power plant. Was that true at all? Uh, yes, also true. So really, okay. yeah, the the nuclear power plant was there in addition to the uh, the U.S. testing <laughs> facility. So I mean, there's a lot of nastiness happening around that particular point. Yeah, so it's not- the chemicals in the air is actually where Mothman came from. Yes, the chemtrails, if you will. Mm, yeah, you would have the to assume. Frogs gay guys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> was it the frog that was photographed being held in the clutch of uh, an owl's talons yes, as yes. it crossed the roads? I'm the one gay <laughs> One One more stab in the dark, and I'm probably going to be wrong. The Go for it. article that you referenced in the beginning, a bird or something, is that article title bullshit? Oh, no, that is not, which is another one of those I was sure that you all would have guessed initially because, yeah, that the initial uh, title for the Point Pleasant Register was Couples See Man-Sized Bird Ellipses Creature Ellipses Something. Because, again, (laughs) I will remind you, all the guy could say is, I think it was a bird, but it was definitely not a UFO. (laughs) But, yeah, I got nothing. Okay. (laughs) What a beautiful title. Give it to us. All right. Um, I will say this is another one of the Shane strategies. So the bulk Uh-oh. of my lies were all clustered together. Ah, and uh, Courtney was sniffing right around the area. But I will tell you, uh, the grave digger situation was incredibly vague. All they say is that there are uh, a collection of grave diggers that were out digging a grave and just saw a massive figure moving around rapidly in the trees. That's all they said. So everything that I added in after that is line number one is that they were concluding their day. So that was around dusk. And so they couldn't see things very well. They don't say when they were digging, which would makes this even more. I'm incredulous even more if it's like the middle of the day. And then they're like, this thing flew over our heads and it was huge. I'm like, <laughs> So it has to be some point during the night. But this is also in November. So why are you digging graves in West Virginia at night? In November, the ground is probably going to be frozen. Like, a lot of this stuff doesn't make sense to me as I was reading it. So I was like, well, let's just see how I can massage this. 
Line number two was that they uh, each indicated that the creature had the reflective eyes of a predator. They didn't say anything about its eyes at all. That came from the later accounts. They didn't say anything about the creature at all. It was just, we saw a brown human being. That is literally all that they said <laughs> about this thing. Which And they didn't even say brown human being with wings. It was literal translation. Brown human being. <laughs> So obviously the heads of the class valedictorians all uh, lies. Number three is that frozen in fear. They had to just stand there being transfixed by the eyes as it was looking until it closed its eyes. And then they were released from its grip. That also not true. Uh, Arthur Sellers is a, is the name of the gentleman who wrote branded in the big Lebowski. <laughs> Damn. Arthur Digby Sellers wrote the bulk of the uh, series, so uh, he is the only one who claimed he couldn't move or speak uh, until the the thing stopped looking at him, uh, and that's the third lie. And then lie number four is that they subsequently scoured the area, hoping to find some trace of the thing and track it down. They didn't look for it at all. They just they saw the thing and they went ah, and scampered off, and and then they were done. At least as far as I could tell. So those were the first four lies. Lie number five you did get was Steve and Peggy Rogers. It was not uh, them at all. That was uh, Steve and Mary Mallet. And I did indicate, I told Steven this up front because I was like, I want to see whether or not y'all are paying attention. And I've whipped any number of character names at y'all. So I'm like, if they don't get Captain America and Peggy Carter, I'm going to be really sign. upset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank I, you. I gave you a layup. And finally, this one may or may not be considered to cheap. So I'll see how, how angrily uh, I get everybody yelling at me. Um, the only report of glowing red eyes that was ever given was secondhand by the claims of Shirley Partridge. Uh, it was not Shirley Partridge. This is someone named Shirley Hensley. Uh, who I uh, so Newell Partridge, whose dog was stolen, had nothing to do with this. Shirley Hensley is an individual who claimed to have seen the Mothman multiple times over the course of a three year period. So she actually claimed that every time she would go out of the house, she would see the Mothman. And it was a constant run where you're like, okay, come on, really? Uh, there's a very lengthy article that I'm including here, which again is another one of those where I said I couldn't stand to read the thing any longer because it's like, well, my parents didn't talk to me much back at this time and we would always eat TV dinners at seven o'clock on Sunday. And so I'd step outside to go and like, I don't care about your life story, your bowel movements or any other number of inconsequential details of your life. I don't need to hear any of this. Just tell me what is going on. It's, it's got big red eyes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, Thank you. And, so, yeah. <laughs> so I linked it back to uh, something that I had already mentioned in the story in the hopes of giving, you know, a little more credibility. So kind of a cheap lie. I, I'm not shocked, but of all the other names that you were calling out that would have been bullshit, uh, Shirley Partridge, which is actually a character name as well, seemed to me to be, you know, eerily fitting. But uh, Newell Partridge was also another person. So there we are. So those are my six lies. OK, well done. Yeah. 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 So that is going to uh, give us a little more of Shane's supernatural bullshit in the course of the show proper. And I thank you all for enduring it. Thanks for talking about it. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it's going to be just as popular and exciting as all of my other various paranormal themed shows. I feel I'm, like your paranormal shows do really well. I'm really you think glad that. I picked Mothman. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michael, can you get your question out of the way so I can encourage you guys to watch something you know what i don't want to today right, fuck you then you you keep foistering it upon me to just do the bit For, and foistering? it's not natural anymore anymore bit? it's it's just not yeah, natural bit, it, it should it should just seek naturally into that question because i'm genuinely curious as to how everyone is doing so there we go and by the act of just being like get your shit out of the way so i can do real shit can guys. i can i and, ask you, know, you I just, why your favorite band is still foister the people <laughs> God, I don't know. I like their. Oh no, I forgot. You like Bob Seeger instead. Seeger, please. Yeah. Um, have any of you watched Midnight Mass yet? No, negative. I I'm have not yet, Catholic. I, We've talked about this. I I'm on the last episode. Are you blown away? I fucking adore that show. What is Peter so, Norris? I mean, fucking good. 
Well, yes, that is why he is blown away yeah. and why he blasted off uh, in any other Do you know what it, th- metaphors. Do you know what it feels like to me, Michael, and maybe you can back me up on this? It feels like a Stephen King story without being a Stephen King story. Almost certainly. As far as the pacing, yes. the character developments, the representation of of monsters as people and not entities, but also maybe there's monsters. Who knows? Um, highly recommend. And also, it's directed by this, directed and written by Mike Flanagan. Mike Fl- Flanagan. So, haunting at House Hill and haunting at Doctor Blind Manor. Fucking sleep. Yes. Yep. The the yep. haunting at House Hill. You say. <laughs> <laughs> did I say? Did I? What did I say? The haunting Damn at House I, Hill. Yes. Okay. It's, it's a okay. Game of Thrones spinoff story. It's actually no. It's actually a fan fiction written about the the haunting at um, House Hill. Yes. Joe Hill's uh, own house. Yes. Joe Hill's house. And yes. That's right. yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, Courtney, I think you would really dig it. Sorry. I'm not taking any other recommendations from you. Why? You're would banned. you take it from me? Why would you watch? Would you take a recommendation well, for me. Because after forty-five minutes of feast, we turn that shit off. Oh, I never claimed it was a good movie. That's fair. He kind of laughed when you said you were watching. Feast. I didn't say. I think oh, said, like good luck. Yeah, or I didn't something. say. Oh my god, it's gonna be so good. I said, yeah, essentially. It yikes. was in the bag. Did you get to the scene in Feast where the monster uh, face humps? Yes, what? because that was right before what? Eric Dane showed up, and I love him. And then he dies immediately. So what a garbage so, movie! So real quick, Feast is a uh, a product of a show called Project Greenlight. Um, so on that season, the reason that Feast is exists is because the director won a contest on a reality show. Um, not a good movie, but it, I thought it was at least fun for a creature feature. Anyway. That also is loosely associated with uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, they were they were on that season. On the cover. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, speaking of things that you feel, John, uh, I'm going to impart a bit of wisdom that your father told me once: is if it feels like more than two fingers, it's probably a dick. You know, I honestly I'm, thought you were going to say a fist. I'm trying to but... think about everything that I've experienced in my life. Yeah, that's good advice. Valid. That's really good. That's good advice. Yep, yep, it's a good idea. And speaking of banned, uh, Courtney has got, uh, other than John being banned, apparently Courtney has a story to to regale us with. It's not that exciting, which is why I was like, I'm going to just take this out of the group chat. It doesn't matter. But I I wore one of my... (laughs) I don't want you guys to get all excited that you're famous now, okay? Chill. I can <laughs> never hear John's about that. head inflating. I know that was what I was afraid of, Michael. Never worried about that. <laughs> no, so I wore um the new damn shirt to fries today, and the guy in line behind me goes, "Hey, like damn the weather, like the band." And I was like, "No, just damn, enough. just just just." Uh, fuck. no, I just made this. It was my own idea. No, so he turned around. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh yeah, man," and he goes, "Oh, dude, I know Logan." And I was like, okay. So is everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of people he gets know him. Around. He's very nice. And he goes, so you heard of the band? And I was like, well, yeah, I kind of do no. a podcast. I, I, I've heard, you've heard That's when you should have just gone in and said, oh, no, I also, actually, I, like- I found this outside. I did. Also, I, like- I got out of my car and I realized, oh, shit, I'm not wearing a shirt. Well, how am I going to get into the store oh, now? On. And you're like, oh, look, there's a shirt there on the floor right outside let's, of this store. I'm going to wear let's it. Let's maybe yeah. defend this, though. Maybe, maybe, because was it the bleached one that you have? Or the no, one you- it was no, the, the new, the one, new the shirt. Skull. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, way, which has I mean, stuff on the back where he would have been aff- able to read it. We've offended enough people. It's not outside the realm of reason that people have ditched our shirts and they're in, like, Goodwill somewhere. So, like... Or like your know, thrift stores, so maybe maybe there is a world, or there is somebody that has it, kind of like the fucking like eighteen year old girls now that wear the ripped up Nirvana shirts. They're like, yeah, I love yoga, like you know. Like- <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did I did tell you that story though, right? No, I was like, that's no. oddly specific. Is did this happen? No, it didn't happen exactly that way. I got a um. I got a message from my manager at the time saying, I sat across from a girl in the shuttle bus going to the university that we work at uh, and saying, I sat across from someone in one of your band shirts. And huh. and so I was like, oh, she must know. So she's like, I, uh, I know Shane to the individual. And she's like, who? <laughs> It's like Shane, he's he's in that band, and she goes, "Oh, I got this at Goodwill." Fuck yeah! Oh, no. 
Fuck yeah. <laughs> we made it, Shane. We fucking made it. And I, I had jokingly said, I'm sure she said that because she actually knows somebody in the band that didn't want to admit that she knew me. <laughs> and so that's uh, probably what it is. But that I, I'd heard that it is apocryphal that somebody claimed that they got one of our shirts at Goodwill. I don't think that's really the case. But. The, the strange thing about that, too, or Courtney's story is that my one of my coworkers, her name's Johnny, uh, she texted me last, like middle of last week, and she goes, I was just in Michael's and someone was wearing one of your shirts. It's probably me. So, so, or me. I frequent Michael's. No, it was, a, lot. Like, it was, a, it was a dude or something in Central <laughs> oh, Phoenix. Never mind. Um, and I was like, that's weird. But also, I mean, it's kind of cool. You know, I guess that's why you do merch, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, walking all, advertisement. I mean, now if they could just buy the records and, you know, no, listen to the ass. shit online, that would be great too. But no. yeah, yeah. Speaking of merch, See, Michael, I failed to give you a sticker, and uh, I feel really bad about it. He doesn't and... deserve one. Um, yeah, but... don't don't uh, don't ever feel bad for doing something to me. I mean, if it's, Courtney it's... gives me your address, I can send it along with the bees. I will literally send it. How can to you right now? Oh, okay. I think Jessica's to take take my yeah. Pens. I was gonna. Yeah, she can. She can most certainly take uh, to add insult to injury. She can take the the pins intended I'm... for Michael. So That's great. These, these were for you, but these go to her now. <gasps> sure, yes, by all means. Oh my god, <laughs> she deserves them more than I do. This is on air, so if you, if you want to guest on the show, you get presents. Oh yay! So, it, that is true. Well, and I'm furthermore, guest on the show again because I I feel bad for not being prepared to talk about my favorite subject. In the oh, world. you're um, fine. Oh, you'll you'll be back on for sure. <laughs> and also, as we've proven for those for the three of you who are actually looking at our Facebook page from time to time, uh, you will be rewarded for being a fan of this show. And I can say that because there is a glorious care package received by super fan Michael. And uh, he's just going to be Michael from this point forward. I'm just going to start referring to <laughs> you as Michael. Peener. Peener. That's fine. I think no, that's the... not even new because that that would assu- that would even imply that he replaced me. Yeah. And I feel like he's he's better than that. There's no replacement. He's just Michael. Mm-hmm. I'm just the editor. Or just I, I might that. just start calling him Doctor Michael just because it's going to be appropriate. Even better. That's, uh, <laughs> in any event, he got a glorious care package, which you can see on the Facebook page if you're so inclined. And Courtney will take good care of you. Other than she won't actually give you Michael's address because I have somebody on the line right now with us who can attest to the fact that she is not really handing that out. And uh, Jess is very upset. Well, Uh (laughs) due to privacy laws and the fact that I don't have a lawyer on retainer right now, I just, you know, I've been a little busy. After Courtney's first homicide, she got away with (laughs) <laughs> she has a f- everyone gets she one. She has a foolproof plan and it worked once. So Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I happen to be a small town board lawyer and I am more than willing to represent you in any court of law as necessary, Ms. Courtney. The only thing that I'm going to pose is that if you do notice an odd smell coming from the trash cans for you know, where you when you're walking the dog, you know, the little dog poo receptacles, there might actually be body parts in there. Yep. So I will Don't. say I I upset Jonah today and he was holding a, a plastic bag, like a grocery bag. And he goes, come here, I want to show you something. And tried to put the bag over my head. So murder is inevitable what? in this home. Oh, and wow. <laughs> like better people have tried. Yeah, I was like, you're going to have to try a lot harder than that, I'm, bud. <laughs> I've tried harder than that. It doesn't work. Uh, furthermore, <laughs> joke's on you, asshole. I'm going to be dead in three weeks anyway. So why are you trying to preempt this? <laughs> You could just hang back and keep the blood off of your hands, and I'll go of natural causes. And enjoy the show. Um, But, yeah. The life insurance doesn't come through if you do it, so. Yeah, that that boy's not real bright. I love him, but (laughs) damn it, he's kind of slow. Just because Jonah is on topic right now, I'm not trying to turn this into the three-hour episode. Yes, you are. um, It's your own fault. Courtney, you shared an interesting video on your TikTok after our last show, so almost a week ago where Jonah was saying that he's the most precious boy or the most precious person in your household. Can you, can you explain what happened there? Is that him <laughs> fucked up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, know or did he lose a bet? No, he's just like that. So I don't remember what exactly the context was, but I was, I was like, Oh, I'm nice. And he goes, yeah, you're the nicest. And I go, and I'm cute. And he goes, uh, you're, I'm the cutest. You're second in command. <laughs> Oh my god! And um, that's words. on being married to Jonah. <laughs> Man, oof. Well, there are people online indicating you're you're looking like a snack. So, 
Better be careful. I've never heard Jonah being referred to as such. Yes, you so. have. <laughs> I've oh, said it. I guess you have said that at one point or another, John. <laughs> I have. I, I immediately saved the tasteful nude of him eating a pizza that was sent. Oh, God. I saved God. it twice. <laughs> All right. So ultimately, we need to go very Night Vale right now. So then uh, Becky needs to break up with John and go with Kristen. Jonah okay. can then break up with Courtney and go with John. Go with the pizza. And oh. then Courtney can field any number of other people who can afford to uh, keep her in the manner she'd like to become accustomed to. And then Michael can just continue to go fucking himself like everybody <laughs> wishes, and it'll all work out perfectly. Perfect. And, Sounds and like Shane, a win to me. you get to keep the dictionary. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's a good friend of mine, and it has been with me. I'm like Eminem. It's all I read. AKA the family Bible. Yeah. Gotta wake up <laughs> gotta wake up Labor Day today. Uh Jess, I feel like you were about to say something and then we will sign off. I don't I don't remember what I was gonna say. I got distracted by things Same. and you know, Same. Kristen marrying Becky. It's and, gonna happen. And yeah. sending yes. panties to people through the mail and yeah. yeah. I still don't know why she said that. Oh, you do. <laughs> it's gonna haunt me. If we did, if we did a late record uh, on the, because we record on Wednesdays, in case you haven't caught on by now. Um, ah, don't peer behind the curtain. <laughs> if we did a late start, I think Kristen would be able to get here at like seven thir- or eight o'clock. Probably, we could have her on again and see if she's more, uh, if she can have redemption uh, when she's not almost blacked out on her birthday. Well, you know uh, why Kristen wanted to send Michael the panties, though. The yes. heart wants what the heart wants. No, no, no. It is because that uh, Michael has, in recent history, told many a woman to get thee to a nunnery, and one of them finally took him up on the offer. So Nice. <laughs> it's official. <laughs> so speaking of being cucked by God, yet again, thank you all for being here for another stirring installment of the Disinformed Podcast. We are thrilled to have you as always. And of course, all of our socials are in the link tree in the show notes down there, so go give us a follow there. You will see myriad uh, manifestations of Jess's work in particular, which is chef's kiss, just brilliant and beautiful. Uh, contributions, of course, from stupor, uh, stupor fan Stephen. And, uh, and then, of course, all of Courtney's good work that is done on the TikToks, which uh, Stephen finally got to catch up. He, he refused to have anything to do with TikTok. He's like, so I can't see them. I'm like, I'll just send you a link. And you can watch yeah, you, the videos. You don't need an account, yeah. yeah, you don't have yeah. to do anything. There's no authentication needed. You can just watch the damn things. So please do. And there was some very interesting fodder this week, which got me in trouble with the risen Lord Jesus, and uh, I might never be forgiven. <laughs> yeah, we but. discovered a whole plethora of things that you can put up your butt if you're brave. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> God no. damn. No, I'm not going to go there. So if you want to find out, friends, uh, go go scope us out on, on all the socials. But I believe that that is going to wrap us up like a pair of butt cheeks pressed around a bobbleheaded Christ. So for the Disinformed <laughs> podcast this week. Also, I will mention we're about to do a little After Dark for the first time in a good long while. Yay! So stick around for that. Float over to the tubes of you this Wednesday so you can see what we're doing over here on the video nonsense. Uh, that said, 10 a.m. Mountain Time on the YouTube's of you. So, bless all you for being here. So, now that I have fumble-fucked my way through this outro 17 father-fucking times, here we go for the Disinformed Podcast this week. I'm Shane. I'm John. I'm Michael. I'm Courtney. I'm Jesse. And thank you all for being here, and Mr. Michael. And zippity-zoop, we're out of here!